the, the first three places are in South Africa, actually. And um, this is my colleague, Dr. Mbakis and Bay, and this trip was generally the car trip. And it was pretty expensive, although he was my colleague, he charged me, I guess, much more than it cost me. So, this, this is a supportive idea, your colleagues are always good, but don't think that they think of you much more than they think about themselves. So, so this is actually the Dakar reviews, you can see the passengers. Unfortunately, I didn't travel in this lovely transport, because we were traveling by car, and Mbake, who is a uh, who is a professor, he said that you shouldn't travel in these cars because they are true. For him, it's something what he cannot, he shouldn't uh, use, but actually, why not? And this is a uh, general use of, you can see it's quite, quite, um, quite desert-like area, quite dry, but pe people are wearing quite picturesque clothes and uh, generally people say that you go to West Africa not to look at wildlife but more on people because people are more uh, exotic. And this is a local villages generally this uh, riparian um, landscapes they are quite widespread and sure uh, although it looks like pretty dry but the level of endemism in West Africa is actually much higher than in East Africa. I don't know why it's some kind of zoogeographical peculiarity. But there are lots of birds and species of birds, uh, less of mammals, um, and for lots of insects. And actually, each area is uh, very endemic of species. Uh, malaria is not uh, not the item in most areas, and but many uh, dead animals eventually become a food for for the birds. And uh, uh, we actually travel through old Senegal from Dakar to the uh, Neokolokaba Natural Reserve. It's along the Gambia River, the same river which gave a, neighbor, a neighboring country. Uh, so even in that dry area, you can find some wet areas. And uh, I could collect along this river on the uh, acacia trees, the pods of these trees, to collect the beetles and their parts of them. Then Kenya. So we are switch from East Africa, uh, from West Africa, from French Africa to uh, former British Africa to East Africa. And Kenya is probably one of the most popular countries. And also, as I said, the direction to Nairobi is the cheapest. So I probably would try another country for, uh, first, but there was no option because the travel to Nairobi was the cheapest. And also in Nairobi, this International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology is a pretty international center. Generally, uh, Germans and Americans work in there, and uh, it, it, it's quite, quite interesting and well-equipped organization. I hope to continue working there in, in a year or two, something like that. Um, but the person from there was the guy who said that you couldn't go anywhere because everybody is uh, there are robbers and this, everything is dangerous, and, there are, uh, I, and uh, when I visited him there, he calculated that yesterday somebody has stolen a um, um, radio receiver from my car, and another notebook was stolen from a person. So what? But uh, this is something what is really impressive for them. But nevertheless, uh, they go to uh, downtown with uh, expensive um, cell phones and laptops and go to McDonald's, they open laptops, they speak with cell phones and eventually they get surprised when they go out, somebody has teasing it. <laughs> Why should you demonstrate it in the inside if you don't want to have it stolen outside? But this, is, this is some very peculiar, very peculiar things uh, of our Western colleagues, so this is why I say that you shouldn't rely on their advice, because, because what they think dangerous should not be dangerous, and otherwise. For example, there were two girls who were working for some humanitarian mission, something like uh, medical treatment of local women, something like that, and um, they were staying in the same hotel as I uh, did in these first days, and once uh, they came to very poor, the poorest area of Nairobi. Actually, in all pictures, it's a picture of the most probably poor 
place in the world because mm -hmm. people simply s sleep on the ground and uh, they nearly have no um, clothes and there are highest level of crimes in, in that area and they came there like for, for excursion and when I uh, and when they got back in the union they said it was very interesting we we have seen how people live but they said you shouldn't go there and I said okay you too came there why not me? they said because we express um, kindness and not you <laughs> and they were kind to us so they could be raped any any moment raped or killed but they think that if they feel these guys with kindness they should be uh, in opposite so they, they they should reply with the same i shouldn't go there but they 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 came so you you shouldn't trust on what they think dangerous and what they think safe so this is actually nairobi uh, the capital city and this is very interesting stalingrad shuttles probably somebody has been studying in former so you, uh, Soviet Union and decided to give a name of the local buses like Stalingrad, mm -hmm. good name. And uh, this, is a, uh, this is what they call Matatu. This is uh, their local minibuses, uh, like, like our minibuses. And the most, most traveling I have been doing uh, was just in minibuses like this. This is actually the stick of my sweet net. Just in front. Mm -hmm. I'm not kicking, uh, knocking over uh, uh, the guy in front of me, it's just, <laughs> just a stick of mine. Yeah. And um, actually Kenya quite dry indeed, not as dry as uh, Senegal, but many areas are quite dry and uh, uh, I visited some national park, but general entrance to the national park is pretty expensive, something like two, three hundred dollars, so most national parks are not suitable for backpacker scientists, but uh, places like Hell's Gate Park, uh, they are accessible, actual entrance is just twenty dollars, and you also can rent a bike. And with a bike you can cycle uh, around the whole uh, national park and actually to collect insects. Um, the permission to collect is another story. I tried to uh, arrange uh, the official permission to collect insects in uh, Kenya. It took me one week indeed, going from one building to another building. I had lots of supporting letters, and my visiting of um, officials resulted just in advice to go to another door. So you, 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 you bring in your papers, uh, the local guy looks and says, okay, go there. And the, the level of bureaucracy is overwhelming indeed, so I had something like half permission. I had the letters supporting that I'm authorized, but I will head to still to go to UNESCO whatsoever. So I stopped doing it, decided that I have enough permissions for myself. And you can see that uh, the wet areas are also present there, like Lake Naivasha. So as I said, be patient. Yeah, you can find, even in a very dry area, you can find wet areas and vice versa. Uh, and Kenyan wildlife, for Kenya is probably the best known for its wildlife. Yeah, they make these uh, holes, there, so they hide in there. And, uh, and what is pleasant in uh, visiting uh, non-organized, I have uh, um, I generally try to avoid organized um, tours in in national park because when you are in the, in the car, you you actually losing this feeling what you have when you simply going to the bush and you can see the giraffe or antelopes. They they are not uh, organized for you. It's not like <coughs> a zoo. Yeah, they are just naturally there, and nobody took you to in front of the animals, so everything looks natural when you, when you can travel just yourself and not, not in organized food. Uganda is relatively wet. It's for, for the time being I treat Uganda as probably the best African country. And if, actually, if you want to have an idea what Africa is, probably Uganda is totally enough. It's quite small, so you can get to any area inside uh, with public bus, so they call it also Massachusetts. Uh, these small minibuses and inside of um, cities or villages you use these guys. These guys actually they are not bikers 
This is a taxi. <laughs> the taxi which is called Boda Boda. And uh, you, uh, they are a bit more expensive than the minibus, uh, than the local minibuses, but this is the, the traveling how, uh, how it looks like. Yeah? You're sitting just on the back and you can um, get with much more quickly than with minibuses because they can actually move between houses on the uh, tarmac roads, not on official roads. And this is actually the wildlife. So this is generally the uh, forest on the equators, like in Simliki National Park, and another area where lions are sleeping in trees, tree dwelling lions, and many other animals. So actually, Uganda is one of the best and one of the most diverse places. Actually, uh, what I have found that Occasionally, you don't really need any reserve because, like this forest below, Chegegua forest, actually, they confuse Ki and Che. So, they, although it's written Chegegua, they uh, read it Chegegua. Uh, it's actually the area behind the village, but it was more, much more rich on the biodiversity than uh, many national parks. So. Also, why it's good to use uh, along the planet's guide, you can uh, read and if you find something like a small groove or a forest nearby, or you can see it on the map, it's always better to try it because uh, even the small area nearby the village can be much more interesting than an official uh, national park. And you don't have to pay anything to go, to go there. Then Tanzania. Tanzania is also more dry, so Uganda is likely one of the most wet countries, so it's in dry season it's one of the best places to travel to. Uh, traveling to Uganda, uh, once I was traveling to Tanzania, I was traveling in such a bus uh, from uh, Uganda to Tanzania through Kenya, so it was actually a return to Kenya, but not without any stay in Kenya, going directly to Tanzania. It took one evening, whole day then, and, and uh, half day afterwards, so from like one and a half day or nearly two days in, in the bus, so you have to be in a relatively good shape, to <laughs> physical shape to travel uh, in these uh, buses. They are going very, very fastly with very high speed, and it was interesting that, for example, uh, a woman in front of me, this black woman, she was... Um, actually uh, feeding her, uh, her kid during this <laughs> jumping in, in the bus. I, did, I, I couldn't understand what, what they both feel actually because on the rocks this uh, very swift bus was simply jumping and I was knocking with my head on this uh, roof there and they too. But they were very tolerant and the kid wasn't crying and simply was, was feeding. So you have to be that tolerant to the uh, circumstances as locals. And you can see the main landscapes. Yeah, it's like savanna, and uh, the savanna is uh, relatively dry most of the year, except for um, for um, rain season. And but some interesting wildlife like tomatoes can be found. But the same tomatoes were collected actually in Zambia. So as I said that. Uh, Eastern Africa has less uh, degree of endemism, and uh, these guys uh, proved to be my local guide in Marangum Tony. So this is the foothills of Kilimanjaro mountain, and uh, um, actually to uh, get to the national reserve of Kilimanjaro, you have to pay some really crazy money because something like five, six hundred, uh, five hundred or six hundred uh, dollars. Simply to enter uh, Kilimanjaro Mountain and for climbing, extra. But there are lots of tourists and they pay that money and they want that money. And truly, I was not ready to pay it. But any money are welcome. So if you have enough time, simply first day you come in to the foothills and walking around the uh, arena. So this is a uh, Actually, the foothills quite picturesque and uh, quite wet. So uh, there are waterfalls and good vegetation around, good insects. I was simply walking there, collecting there, and sure, 
I met these guys, uh, the whole village Marandum Tony 